Hello, did you know that you can uh, query databases using Java 8 screens? In this uh, short video, I'm going to show you uh, a lot of the new kind of tools that are available from Java 8, Java 9, Java 10. And I'm going to showcase them using JShell, a new tool that was introduced in Java 9. So uh, if you've never used JShell before, it is basically a application that allows us to write uh, Java code into the terminal and get it evaluated in real time. So you can see here that I'm running Java 10. Um, so if I wanted to, for example, just get the, uh, the um, sum of one and one, I could write one plus one and get the answer of two back. And if I wanted to allocate a new object, uh, I could write like list.off one, two, three, four, five. And then we get a new list with those elements. And you see here on the left side that whenever I type something in the initial, uh, it prints out dollar one arrow something, dollar two arrow and so on. This is because uh, Yeshel allows us to get access to these variables again if we want to reuse them. So if I want to reuse this expression and add something more to it, I could just write dollar one plus three, and I'll get the answer of five. Uh, and you see that this is uh, then stored in a new variable again, so that I always get an incrementing number. So uh, if we look at this list, for example, if I wanted to know how many elements are in this list, I could just write dollar sign two dot size it would give me the number five. However, this is not the only way of counting the number of uh, elements in a list. Uh, in Java 8, they added something called strings, uh, which is a really convenient and nice uh, API for doing operations on collections. So if I wanted to use a stream to count the number of elements in this list, I could just write $2.stream.count. It would give me the exact same number. However, this is a little bit different. Because in the first example here, when we counted it using the dot size operation, what it's doing is just reading a simple integer stored in the collection. So it's a very, very fast operation. However, down here, we're actually iterating over every single element in the list, uh, in adding a, a value to an incrementing integer, and then returning it. So this is a log n operation, while this is a constant time operation. So th there is some difference in the background. So why would you ever want to uh, use a stream for this uh, if this is so much faster? Well, having a stream allows us to do much more than just you know, getting a count of all the elements. We could, for an example, limit the number of uh, elements that we're interested in by adding a filter. To say that we're only interested in the even numbers, we want to know how many even numbers are there in the list. I could say, uh, take the same example as before, but it just add a filter, and say that for every inc uh, incoming int uh, integer, I only want the integers that have a module of two equal to zero to survive. And then I will only count those elements. So in this case, I can see that there are two even numbers in the list. Uh, there is the two and the four. And if I wanted to be sure that uh, those were the exact uh, uh, numbers that were even, I could uh, choose to collect them to a list instead. So uh, to be able to use some of the more advanced collect um, collect operations, we need to import them. So I'm going to write import static java util uh, stream uh, and then collectors uh, with plural and then dot star. So now I have all the collectors imported statically. So if I want to use the same operation here, uh, but I want to see the which numbers actually passed it, I could write dot collect and then to a list. Now we get a new list back with only the elements two and four. So this is a nice way of working with things. We can work in a uh, way we don't have to express exactly how things are being done, only what we want to be, uh, be performed. So in this case, I didn't explicitly say iterate over every single item, discard those that are not uh, even, and collect the rest of them to a list. I didn't have to write all of that down into like a for loop and allocate variables in before and so on. All of that is done automatically in the background. I only have to say to Java what I want to do, and Java will solve the best. So this is a, a nice way of working. So I'm going to switch over to a second window here where I've prepared some stuff. So uh, say that I uh, wanted to, uh, I have a collection called films, uh, and I wanted to uh, uh, count the number of elements in it. Then I could write films.stream.count, just as in the previous example. But here you see that something different is happening. First off, there's 1,000 films, that's fine. But you can see here that it printed out select count star from Tequila Film. 
So this looks an lot, awful lot like a SQL query. And yeah, that's true. Because um, this fill is created by a software called Speedment. So if we scroll up a little bit, you'll see that I have a Speedment running here in the background. And what Speedment is doing, it is uh, supplying us with streams that whenever they are terminated, they will be uh, analyzed, sent to the database, and, uh, and then get a response back and turn that response into a stream. Um, so in this case, Speedment managed to see that uh, what I'm trying to do here is get the count of all the films. So it's uh, created a SQL query that says select count star from Sakila film, sent it to a MySQL database, uh, got a, a response back that it's just one single count, and then just returned the count without iterating. So you remember how I, in a previous example here, said that this is a very fast operation, but this is a very slow operation. Well, with the speedment stream, it doesn't have to be slow because uh, this stream could actually uh, terminate in constant time. It was only the time it took to send it to the database and back. And in the same uh, principle as before, if I wanted to add something more to the stream, I could do that. I could, for an example, show to add a filter. But here comes, you know, two a little bit annoying things with writing streams. First, uh, I am very familiar with this database. I know exactly what columns are available and so on. But uh, other people might not be, and you might not be uh, as you're watching this. So how do you know how you would write this filter when there is just an object of some kind and you'd, you don't want to look at the source code? Well, uh, Speedment has something called predicate builders. So what a predicate builder allows us to do is get a type safe way of expressing things like filters. So I could write fill, dot, and then use tab complete to see all the columns that are available. Now you can see that I have a column called length. So let's take length, and then I can use tab complete to see what operators are available uh, for the column. And here we can, for example, see that I have a less than operator. So I'm just going to write less than, and then choose 60. I want to see um, count how many films are shorter than 60 minutes. And boom, there are 96 movies that are shorter than 60 minutes. And up here you can see the entire SQL query that was being generated. You can see that it's added a wildcard and supplied a prepared statement with a operand and so on. So it's a nicely formatted uh, SQL query. Um, so this is nice. I can uh, express streams, I can express filters, and Speedman will turn them into appropriate SQL. Um, but what if I want to do something a little bit more advanced? So you remember previously, I used a collector to get a list of uh, the uh, numbers that passed through the filter. Well, uh, let's do something a little bit more advanced this time. Let's use a collector to count uh, how many movies are in each category of rating. So you know that uh, films usually have a rating, how old you need to be to watch it. So in this uh, particular table, this column is called rating. It's basically an enum column that has different categories. So uh, if I were to write film.rating, uh, I could see the different rating categories here. There's G, there's NC17, uh, PG, PG13, and R. So how, were, how would I go about to write that kind of uh, stream? Well, I could do, go here, say films.stream.filter.count, uh, but instead of count, I can just write uh, collect. And then in here, I'm going to use a collector called grouping by. So I'm just writing grouping by. And then this collector takes two operands. First off, uh, I need to supply it with um, the category, uh, the categorizer. How will I know uh, when an incoming film is coming, uh, what category it belongs to? So it's simply film.rating. And then uh, I need to supply it with a second uh, collector to know what to do with the incoming films that belong to one particular category. In this case, we just simply want to count them, so I'm just going to write counting. And these are all standard Java collectors. And when I type them here, you'll see that I get a hash map back where the key is the rating and the value is the number of films that belong to that rating. So that is cool, right? And all of this is done in uh, writing a database application. It's just you know, playing around and, and exploring the APIs as you go along together with JShell and with the, uh, the Stream API. So if you're interested in, in trying out this for yourself, uh, Speedment is open source. So you can find it on our GitHub page here. It's just github.com slash speedment slash speedment. Uh, and you can read a lot about the uh, different examples and uh, how to you know, express different kinds of SQL queries. So thank you for listening.